right now. You're not yeah. Can I hear the horse? Yeah. Standard. And then they had a Q1, which is a standard with an extra seat on back. Okay. And that means uh, standard plus one extra passenger. And then they had a Q2, so they had seats for two on the back. Then a Q3 had seats for three on the back, and that's called a Turing. And that's the four normal ones. And then this is the uh, similar ratio. Huh. They didn't sell at all until they were sold off of clearance. So it had all the uh, metal, it was, everything was intact? Yeah, but the, the fire ruined the metal. You could almost see through it. It looked oh, almost man. like a screen, a screen, you know, on your door. And it, uh, it was itched too much, yeah, you know, it warped and twisted. But they were, from, they were patterns. So even though a lot of the material has been made, it's 100% exactly like it. Well, you know, it's, the whole car is 100% authentic, every detail. Just as if you had a time machine. How long did it take you to get it like you, you know, on the road? About two and a half years. Two and a half? Well, you were on it, working on it a lot. Yeah. What do you and call this? Speedster? No, it's a semi Yeah. If you look, you look at just the hood, body, seats, and tank, you'll see a race car. But then you add fenders, lights, and on the and it's an almost Head back on the back, antique. Well, you must put on a trailer. Yeah, he lived out in the corner, but he had to put on the back. What about the plane? Got some age on them. Yeah, about 15 years ago. Yeah. Oh wow! The white rubber is not very good, but staying. Huh? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, this all for the big giant funnel in there, and then two men in it'll fill it. And then you put the cap back there. So it was just a racing tank. Hmm. And then the oil goes in over there. Uh, so the oil not, not kept in the engine, it's kept in the river. The oil goes in 
into the engine and back out on the ground. Like right it's gravity fed into it? It's got a little pump uh, back there to put it in the engine. It's gravity to that. It's more of an oil circulator than an actual pump. In mm -hmm. the no, no pressure at all or very little. Just enough to put it inside the engine. Then when the crankshaft comes around, it splices it. Splices it all up and then it runs out around the middle. Now is that an open valve engine? Yeah. I got here this morning. I saw you were already here. Yeah, I, I was here, here about 6:40. <laughs> I came about 6:30. Well, I, wanted, I was going to put it over the lady here, but uh, it got to roll out. It's going here. I couldn't stop it. it banged into that wall. Oh. Most of these Macs had a, I call it a back grab. I thought the guys had This flange is back here on the back, man. I guess it would be. Yes, this, sir. this pipe here goes over the top and back down on the others. But this is all, everything's special. In fact, I always tell people the only thing that's like the other Macs was the same year. and. The alphabetical model is the radiator and the hubcaps. They were all different. Well, they were all alike, but this is different. From the others. How long have you owned it? Uh, six, six to three and a half years. Wow. Is it? I've driven a thousand miles right now. It's not funny. There's something, something wrong with this. I haven't found it. I don't know if it's a carburetor or it. It's got two cams here. Two time gears. One of the time gears may be off. Uh, but I've got the ignition timing correct and the valve timing correct. And Does it it's have firing. Is that twin water pump? What am I looking at, the two? Oh, these? Yes. That's the camshaft. Okay. Uh, see, on the uh, touring cars and runabouts, this thing here is a pulley. And uh, you put the pulley on there, and then, then there's a shaft coming out of here, and the fan is in here. Okay. This guy doesn't have a fan because that robs horsepower. Doesn't have a muffler either. Duncan souped up and, and geared up. My friend's T. He said I watched him start it 20 or 30 times, and, and I felt like I could do it. And he said I'll break my arm. He wouldn't let me do it. <laughs> yeah, you have to know you know your stuff on a T because if you got the spark advanced too much, it, it'll, it'll turn backwards on you. Yeah. You have to retard the spark all the way and crank it, and as soon as it starts, go. He had a, it down. He could get it on that compression stroke and, and kick the tire and make it start. Yeah, or sometimes you <laughs> turn the switch on, they'll start. <laughs> so, and if it's too cold to like today, you'd probably have to uh, uh, jack up a back wheel to start it. Because the oil is so thick that uh, you can't turn it over. Oh, it runs a real 50 weight non detergent oil? Yeah, this does. Model T's, I think, run a thinner oil, but nonetheless, when it's very cold, Sometimes you just can't start them. You can jack up the back wheel. Mm -hmm. When you start it, then that back wheel is like that. You let it down, it stops. You know? I saw a Sears uh, runabout with the belt driven in the back. Yeah. It was a 1910, yeah. or somewhere around that era. Yeah, Sears started about 1908 or 9, lasted about 1912 or later. Well, I appreciate the education. I love learning about them. Yeah, Most people good. aren't into this kind of stuff anymore. Yeah, know. You know what I mean? No, I, I can go to a car thing and I'll be the only old car there. These old, these new Challengers and stuff don't do anything for me. Yeah. I haven't but, seen another brass car up here. No, the, people don't bring them out even when they have them. They'll bring, they'll bring something later. You know? I'm, I'm sure I used to do 80 miles an hour, and that's the nice thing you need to I, go. I'm just worried about everybody else. And they'll take <laughs> off quicker than anything else in the four wheels. It's about, he just let the clutch out and they're gone because he got a 98 pound flywheel. He had a 35 Ford with a Columbia overdrive under it. And we yeah. did 80 in it. Yeah. Yeah, I had my way for a while and the speed armor stopped at 80 and I've had it wrapped all the way around. <laughs> so back when the speed limit was slower, you could run as fast in the Model A as any other car. Scores here. Mm -hmm. Take a spark or two. And then there'll be a little bitty flame and you go adjust oh. your drip. So you get it dripping just the right speed to make the right light. You have to take the top off, which holds the water. That's the water tank on top. And then a pressure tank on the bottom, and in between okay. is a thing that looks like a spaghetti strainer. Yeah. And you put your 
carbide in that. Is that a silver strainer it goes through? Silver? No, no it's just, just a steel. Nothing to do with the reaction of it. No, uh, anytime you put water on carbide, it turns into settling gas. And uh, it makes its own pressure. Nowadays, uh, cutting torches, uh, the, uh, the settling on them is made from petroleum. So it has to have uh, acetone to make it work. And it comes out under hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds of pressure, maybe a thousand. Okay. So it has to be regulated. You try that on that, it would blow the headlights curl out into the street. But uh, carbide comes out at just enough, just enough pressure to light the lights, you know. And this this isn't part of that system, though, is it? No, these are kerosene. Yeah, this would look so like just a regular your, old lamp. Yeah, there's your wick. Just your wick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you is it a? Is this like a T? When you push it in, it, it goes into gear. No, no, it, uh, T is about the only ones that did that. Everybody else is about had, had gears. So that's just a, that's a clutch and brake combined. Okay. Most cars had a. It's like later a clutch pedal and a brake pedal, but Maxwell combined them both into one. So it's got a high and a low. It's got three speeds plus reverse. Three speeds. Yeah. What you do is you get in it, sit down, and push in on the pedal a little farther, farther than it is now, and you shift. If you want to stop, you push it down almost to the floor, and the brakes come on. And then when you're in gear, the pedal is out to here. So as you shift through gears, you go from gear to gear, gear to gear, gear to gear. And it moves, you just watch it, it'll, or you move it back and forth yeah, to shift you, it. Yeah. That way you can keep your foot on the accelerator all the time. Okay. In fact, the guy had a, a brand new 58 Ford with a police interceptor engine. He kept asking me for a drag race. I said, oh, no, I don't drag race. Finally, I said, all right, one time. So we went to a red light and the light changed. I just took my foot off the clutch, you know, and I had it on the accelerator. I took off and was down at the next light, which was still red and the flow timing, because I got there so quick, I turned back to him and said, come on here. And he looked at me and he turned off and I never saw him again. Because, <laughs> you know, he had that police intercept engine, but I yeah. not blast anything. This thing, does it, know, he's 50 and just about yeah. uh, 50 feet. Does it start on a magneto and you switch it over? Yeah. Well, no, it, it would start on a battery and then you switch to magneto, but since I, since I have a high voltage magneto, I don't even bother with a battery. I just use it, just, just start it on a magneto. Most cars won't start on a magneto. What's that secondary tank for up uh, there? Engine. This one? Yeah, yeah, just additional oil into the engine to number okay. one cylinder. Because see, this engine sets at a slope instead of level. Because it's engineered to have the engine, clutch transmission, and, and drive line and differential all in a straight line. You know, you get more torque that way. Oh, okay. And that's a high tension American Bosch Magneto. It puts out about 36,000 volts. So wow. it'll start on the Magneto. Here's a, a dummy battery, that's just, that's just a dummy. But that, that would be the battery. And then this switch up here, if I, if I use the battery, I'd switch it to battery, start it, and then switch it to magneto. But I just started on magneto. Huh. Most cars Is it like an A, the advance? Is this the advance on the right? Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Like the Model A or Model T. And then this is, it has a hand throttle as well as the foot throttle. Oh, that's the hand throttle? Yeah. And but you got a foot? Also, yeah, most cars in this vintage don't have a foot throttle, but this one does. <laughs> but you can, uh, you can't get it wide open on the hand throttle, but uh, you can get it up to, you know, cruising. Uh, I got, to, town speed, you know. I got to drive one of those uh, Surrey runabouts that they, remember the replicas they made back in the 60s or 70s with a tiller steering? Yeah. That was a, a interesting experience. Yeah. Oh, you got dual spares. Yeah. Like in a race, you have a problem with the tire, you got two spares. See, if you'll visualize it without the fenders, just look at just the body, the tank, hood, and you'll see a race car. 
Are these clinch wheels? Is that, did, oh, they didn't operate like that. Like burn? I, I, were they, they were like a, they didn't have the clincher. Yeah, that's a clincher. It is? Right? Okay. Yeah, clincher B, they call it. They're good. Big old brace. external instead of internal. Oh, hey. Oh, there they are. Wide open drums. And it does have drums inside as well. Well, that's for the handbrake. Of course, they're they're all mechanical. Yeah, and it doesn't have any brakes in the front. Just rear. No cars did in those days. Didn't know that. And this car is exceptionally fast. So once you get up over a certain speed, you just forget about brakes. So you put them on and just keep on going like a bicycle. You know, you get a bicycle fast. Just and then get that momentum. Yeah, you get enough momentum. You, you got to keep that in mind wheels. when you stop. <laughs> yeah, well, you got to know what to do. What's in front of you. Like in traffic, you know, and all. You learn how, how far it's going to take you with the weight right. moving. Yeah. And then if they go out, you got to know what to do also. Because brakes like that can go out. Adjust you, them back off. You get it in a lower gear and just... Yeah, sometimes. Or this car is so maneuverable, you can just dodge. You oh, it steers steer. good. Yeah, that's all the steering has got is that much. You know, oh, wow. cars you do like this. Yeah. Car. This is just... And it's not a real big wheel to have that no, kind of well, radius. The others have big wheel, but this is a special wheel. This will say everything under is special. The others have a wheel, oh, three inches bigger around than this. Also, you know, it's a steering column. You've got most cars are steering columns like this. And you sit up here, right beside this. But this, you have to reach to get it, you know. What if, what if some of them had the round windshields? Uh, this wasn't meant to have a windshield or a top. Didn't come with one. No, it wasn't offered. And how would you mount it? Oh, I've seen some of them, they had a round one. Yeah. Uh, older than this car, I think. Like an eight. No, later. Actually, Mercy I'm not sure. Have that. Uh, now, on some cars, they might gloves, leggings. I wouldn't even think about that scarf. You'd want to cover your face for the bugs and stuff. Well, you got the goggles, and then the scarf covers everything, and you, button, you, you turn your collar up and button it, so cover everything. You gotta have 120% of your body covered or you get wind burn. Because when you're running down the highway 65 miles an hour, that wind can kill you. Uh, really? Yeah, the wind burn is worse than sunburn. It doesn't come off, you know, the sun eventually fades. The wind burn, it, it actually burns the flesh. What's your name, sir? I didn't get your uh, name. Bobby Warren. Mr. Warren, I'm Sam Mallow. Yeah. Thank you so name. much. Do you come out to this every year? This is my first time. Me too. I'm out towards Dallas. I drove down here. Yeah. It seemed like it was going to be a big thing, you know. We have several car shows where the someone sponsors it, you know, gives trophies and all, but this is just a get together. I like that better. Yeah. Uh, they don't bring old cars anymore. You see this old, they're all old, but you know what I mean. Is this, is this old lacquer paint on it? No, it's it's a, it's a modern paint. Yeah. Uh, Doesn't look very old. That, it was originally painted with real enamel, but enamel is off that, the market now. Got a Maxwell emblem there. Yeah, I put that there. Uh, someone gave that to me, and I it's, it's in here, and then it's got a thing like this, but that's over the tire. Fastens a tire to this. Okay. Most cars don't have that, but see, this is a high-speed car, and it needs everything you can have. You know, if you go around a corner and your tire will pass you without them. I mean, most cars take a corner at about 15 miles an hour, but I take one at 60. Wow. Take the body off, put seats on the floor, and have, keep your hood, you know, and uh, put a tank on the back. That's a speedster. So these were extremely fast for the era. Yeah. I mean, the fastest land car was 80, 100 miles an hour back then, wasn't it? No, uh, German, take the Germans again. A Benz would go 130 miles an hour. Wow. But they had a thousand cubic inch engine and the radiator cap was up two feet higher than this. That, I know that was the era of the great motors, they giant. Giant, yeah. The giants. Uh, most cars, about, about 50 on the fast ones, you know, is just about top speed. But the Europeans, like the Fiat, the Mercedes, Benz, were huge cars. And then uh, uh, there's a few American cars that had huge engines. They would run, all of them would run about 80 or 90. 
I think Henry. This is a little bitty car with a little bitty engine, but it's souped up. I think Henry Ford come out with a big motor car that he raced. I'd have to bring. Yeah, yeah, it was just a custom. Yeah. Yes, number 666. Barney Oldfield drove it for him. And when Barney uh, started driving, he was a bicycle racer and he didn't know about brakes. He, he didn't know that the cars had brakes on them. Bicycles didn't have brakes in those days, you know. That's the and, big, uh, big wheel bike. Yeah. Uh, and he raced him, so he drove it the whole race. Just drove it, you know. And then I think somebody probably said to him, "Why didn't you use the brakes? What's that?" <laughs> he, he was quite a guy, you know. He drove Maxwell as well. Not, not this one though. Not like this. What was his name? Let's talk about Barney Oldfield. Barney Oldfield. I'll have to do some reading. I'm not familiar with him. I've heard his name, but I'm not. Well, he's the most famous race car driver just about that ever lived. He drove everything that was made just about for different people. You know, they had to hire him to drive in the race. Well, they all had brass yeah, balls had a, back then. He had, a, he had a cigar in his mouth. that he, he didn't smoke. He just chomped it to keep biting his tongue off. You know. Yeah. Well, the cars, well, but the real special was giant ones, you know. He wasn't on his phone back then. He was handling that thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The direct Maxwell he drove was uh, about a 1914 or 15. It that was, was a, after this company went bankrupt and they reincorporated. It was kind of un, unheard of for a name and had a new company and a new car. And he drove the 1914 kerosene Maxwell Racer. It was unheard of for a woman to, to drive a car back then, wasn't it? Not completely. Pretty rare. One lady drove uh, clear across the continent in uh, 1908. And uh, there were a few, very few, but there were women that drove. You know. I know Carl Benz's wife took his car out, is the, the story. Yeah, probably did. And she, she put a couple Benz hundred miles Mercedes on were two separate companies until 1924. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Fiat uh, had 1135 cubic inch four cylinder engine and the radiator was as tall as yours and my shoulder on the Fiat. And the stroke was about this long. Did you see the inside? Wow. My stroke is you know, four inches, but a Fiat had about 11 inch stroke. It doesn't have real big pistons in it, this one. No, they're three and three quarter. It's the same displacement as the Model T Ford, but it'll run three times as fast as the Model T. Well, these were a lot more expensive cars, weren't they? No. Really? Uh, it should have been, but they didn't sell at all. He made a thousand dollars. That was the price of it when it was new. But there was no market for a sports car then. Wasn't practical. At all. Wasn't practical. And somebody wanted to replace the horse, the buggy, you know, so they wouldn't want to buy something like this. Yeah, and there wasn't any roads worth a dang, yeah, I guess. That's right. But what happened? They, they sat still for about three or four years and they finally sold off in clearances. People bought them, they stuck a top and a windshield on them, you know, and drove them around, side curtains. You can imagine how grotesque they look. Mm -hmm. And then after about a year, they got rid of them because they were, just weren't practical and they'd go ahead and buy a real car, if you know what I mean. And they, a kid would buy it and go out to the racetrack and blow everything off the track. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they're fragile. They, they, they break easy, you know, because it's souped up so much. What's the weak link in it? What's the what? The weak link in it, you know, with the power. You had any problems with it coming, yeah, you know, breaking I, things? Yeah, it's been broken at least 20 times since I've had it. It's just, uh, well, that's the same thing today. You take these cars that run around these things, you know, they change the engine after every race on some of them, or, or the engine goes out, or they break. They're, they're broke more than they run. Because, you know, nowadays they go two, over 200 miles an hour, and they, it's the same thing. It, the brake, just like this, might go 100 if you run it completely wide open. Especially with that, that straight drive line, all the torques going back there, yeah. it's not, not losing a lot through the drivetrain. Not only that, it's got a high speed differential, and it only weighs 1,300 pounds. What kind of power did it make? Do you know? Uh, they didn't have uh, brake horsepower then, it just uh, rated by the Born Stroke. It didn't matter if it went 20 miles an hour or 50 miles an hour. A foreign store could determine the horse part to pay up, pay selling for the right to build a car. The seller had a patent on a gasoline rolling bill, and everybody had to pay. And so uh, he gave, he told them how much horsepower it had, and that was 22 and a half. 
but now developed to a brake house board, probably about 60. Wow. 50 or 60. But that's, that's not torque, that's, you know, what it would go. Well, I told that must have run as fast as it goes. It wasn't until later that it started, you know, actually applying a brake. It's, you know, what it takes to stop them. And then that, that's brake rust. You didn't, have, you, you didn't put a speedo on it, did you? No, uh, I didn't have Pick one. Uh, there's, a, there's a racket for a speed on through, but... Uh, Boy, it, it brought it up. Well, and I like it. it, it there's no way I can run a speed on through on it. It's, and, uh, it's not made. The uh, oldest... It I've seen. just be hanging, it'd be hanging off the hood, back here and there. Yeah, it wouldn't look right. You know, I could drill a hole in the dash, but the engine's in the way. It just wasn't meant to have a speed on through either. Yeah. I wouldn't want a monkey with it either. Yeah. Keep it like it's supposed to be. You know, in 1909, it's a 1910 model, but you know, cars come out before the year starts. It, it, they entered one in a race. It, they raced just strip downs all the time, but they stuck one in one race, you know, and it uh, set a new world's record. And then the next day, they entered another race and it broke because they were averaging. I've been running at 80 and 90 miles an hour in both races, you know. And uh, that's why they didn't run them. They run just a touring car without a body, you know, with a, mm -hmm. a speed speed, yeah. That's, that's open cool. wheels, open. Yeah. Uh, this this would be on the floor. And it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't lean back like this. It'd sit up straight, you know. It'd be mounted about here. And then the hood, a piece of something, the old fashioned hood, fenders. Usually they were open inside here. See this part is aerodynamic. You know about the fenders, running board, the step board, the skirt, and just look at the rest. You can see a race car. It's all business. Yeah. How old is this car? 109. Uh, where all cars were until Henry Ford invented the oil pan. And this pan, the race car, holds a whole lot of oil. Uh, a lot of them have just a little tank on the dash holds about two quarts. Yeah. So it's eight and a half gallons of oil. When you run at high speed, you'll go through a couple of gallons in the hole. Sounds like my Mercedes. <laughs> yeah, it's aspirated, you know. It's, it's before they quieten them down. Like a uh, Dodge truck, you know, you know mm -hmm. how those are. It don't have a muffler on it, does it? No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Trying to get a full shot of it. Let me get out of the way here. Useless. 
you're like me, you keep it going yourself, do your own work on it. Yeah. My Mercedes has never seen the, the dealer since I've owned it. I did all the suspension, valve covers. Yeah, well, the same with mine. Uh, this one? I don't know. Do you have a machine shop? Do you have to make any parts? Or are you that deep into it? No, I, I, uh, I just have hand tools. Yeah. But if something needs machining, I take it to a machine shop, you know. Mm -hmm. Messed up my crank handle. He got away from it. Oh man, that's bake light, isn't it? Yeah, I, I made that. Uh, originally had a wooden handle on it, and I wanted it to have brass. So I, this is a screwdriver handle. <laughs> and uh, I just slid this brass over. Now I can't get it back. I'm gonna have to take it off the car and get it. Yes. It comes from down in there. Turn it over. It comes from the tank into this, and that, that's like an oil distributor. It has a little bit of pressure enough to get it to drip, 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 drip. Oh, that block's distributing it to the, the cylinders? Yeah. Uh huh. One, one line to each cylinder, you see. A contract from the airport. And uh, it just drips in like that. I guess it's going real fast, it's probably coming real fast. But and uh, after you stop, it, it's coated with oil, you know, and if I parked here, it'd be a puddle underneath for what running. Yeah. Running down and dripping oil. <laughs> but you can follow, you can trail me home because it'd be dropped there, there, you know. You just follow the trail. <laughs> yeah. If I'm running slow, of course, out on the highway, they're so far apart, you can hear find me. How much oil does it use? Well, it doesn't really use oil. It goes through it and out. But I can make a trip, like say the Waco or something, it'll go through several ports, maybe a gallon. I guess about a gallon to 100 miles of oil. Wow. It holds quite a bit. No, it doesn't hold any. No, I mean the tank. Oh, yeah, yeah, the tank holds eight and a half gallons. And it, it runs, there's no return, and it's going out. Right. <laughs> and all cars were like that, except the idiot named Henry Ford stopped that and stuck a pan underneath and put the oil in the pan. They said, yes, you can, Henry. You can access the cams yeah. with that plate on both sides. Yeah, and, the, and also the rods. Of course, I had to take the carburetor off to get this plate off. But, uh, yeah, you, you can tighten the rods, put shims in or take them out, you know, and they'll be about a quarter of an inch of oil in the bottom. And the, the rods clear the bottom just about that much. You said you shim the rods? I say you can. Yeah, you know, loosen the cap and stick a shim in there and tighten it back up. Do they run a lead or lead top bearing? Or? Yeah, Babbitt. Okay, Babbitt, like a A. Hey, yeah. Well, you do that with A's. You put shims in or take them out, you know. And after it wears, you take out the shim, you know. I didn't know you could do that to rod these old cars. Yeah, yeah. Hey. And finally, they get worn so much that you have to have it rebabbited. And a lot of times, you start out with a stack of shims about that thick, and then you gradually remove until you get down there and on again. It's got a radiator on it, doesn't it? Yeah, two radiators, actually. Oh, yeah. Two cores? Three, three tanks and two cores. <laughs> Only Maxwell had that. No one else did. You gotta show me the exhaust side now. We're halfway there. Oh, okay. This is something I put on there. I call them oil adders. I like to put a little oil in there before it started, just so it makes sure it's got oil when it starts. Just prime it? Yeah. And then uh, I added a tank to go to number one cylinder because this engine is mounted at a slope. I think I already told you that. It's, yes. Yeah. Not that's why 
and number one, uh, get stars for oil sometimes. So I, I open this valve here, and it runs in on both sides, in other words, and then it goes back to the other three. Now, does this adjust your have to do with the mixture? No, that's just primer cutter. Oh, okay. Instead of choking it, you prime it. You just prime each cylinder? Yeah. Uh -huh. It's like starting yeah. a old race car. Yeah. <laughs> See, the uh, yeah, water circulates from here down, but excess water comes up here. That's just extra cool. Does it run cool? Uh, yes, it does. As long as you get going fast, it's cool. But you drive around in town, it'll boil over. It's like any of them back then. Well, no, a lot of them had fans. This has no fans, and no muffler either. Oh, it's got a giant. That's There's no flywheel. no clutch there. Okay, that's the flywheel. Yeah, the flywheel's in front. It doesn't have nothing to do with cooling it. Well, oh it's yeah. It's got a built-in fan that cools the crankcase and a little bit of the air comes up and cools the them. engine you know, from the outside. Okay. But uh, Max, all Maxwells until 1913 had the flywheel in front. So did Ford till they came out with the Model T and then he moved it to the back. There was a pre-T Ford would have a flywheel in front. In fact, Mr. Maxwell designed Ford's engines. Wow. Ford. You got me wanting to rate up on it. Yeah. Kill, kill the engine though, once it froze up, froze the... Uh, you can't jump that far. Yeah. Uh, and you do a ring job, you lift the jugs off the other side, and uh, it failed. So the company went bankrupt, and they had to reincorporate. And they came out with a universal car where they were all just alike. And then, and that was that way for 10 or 15 years, you know. It's like before, you know, the universal car, the universal car, they all Yes. Is that rubber? Oh, it is rubber. Yeah. But they're just there for loops because the spring is so stiff. Yeah. It just bounces off the ground if you get a big enough bump. Because see, the their car is lowered. Most cars are springs like this. You see, these are almost flat. It's only clear as you about an inch. Most cars are clear as about four inches. Also, you probably have most of the things to the left. It does. I see it. Yeah, you have to back up a little bit. I can see it. Lights, fenders. Even the back seat. Even the seat. You go behind it, the tank is like this, you know. That's for going around counterclockwise in the race. <laughs> going around the bank. This this one car has uh, some some of the other. 